Does it matter? Yes. For what? Well, I mean, what's so important about that? You have millions of fans. Out of, out of all the podcasts, that's what you took out of it. The flat Earth. I mean, you were asked again about yeah. it. Yeah. The fact that that could be news all over the world just shows you how. What well, doesn't show? Oh, well, I mean, the fact that it's a social phenomenon that Kyrie thinks the world is flat is hilarious. Well, again, you have lots and lots of fans, and these the fans listen. That affects them. It, it may. Oh, okay. So is that? Yeah. No. So you, that is not something you believe? I mean, no, I'm asking you, does it matter though? Like, well, I have said that it does, so now I'm asking, oh, okay. you, I'm asking you if that is something you truly I mean, believe. I mean, it doesn't really have a, you know, a reverence over my life. You know, I mean, you know, I just feel like that the fact that it's even a conversation is hilarious. You know, that, that, that could actually be news. It's some, hilarious. Some people thought you were joking. You're not joking. No, I mean it was just like a, it was just like a point that you know the fact that that could actually be real news, like everything that's going on that Kyrie Irving thinks the world is flat. So, like it's, I mean we got ask like relevant relevant questions what's going on in the world, like what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? Or what, what I what I really believe, or you know who I really am. That that'd be nice. But the fact that that's what everyone got out of the podcast, that's you know, that's hilarious. Well, we can get to who you are, certainly, but. Is this something that you believe? I mean, does it matter? That's what, that's what I'm asking. Well, that doesn't matter to you, like that I think that the world is flat, or I think that the world is round. I mean, you or, or or is it like just the fact that we're sitting here asking, you know, answering asking questions? Do I, do I think the world is flat? <laughs> you, I mean, you said that it's a shame or that it's funny that that is something that's new. Yeah, no, it's hilarious. We're in an age where people throw around terms like fake news and they talk about things that aren't true and aren't real. So then you come out and say something about the Earth being round or flat. I mean, the science would suggest that it is round. Yeah. And you are. That would be scientifically impossible. Again, you are. Which I'm very, totally aware of that. And you are a very popular figure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you have a you have a microphone. You know you, you have a. Podium, What's your point? And you, and you said this, so that's why it matters. Everybody wants to know. Okay. Do you believe this? I'm gonna believe what I believe, and then you know whether I think the world is flat, whether I think the world is round. I mean, believe what I believe. Hold on, Rachel, give me a second. The Cavaliers, where they are right now. Things are going in. No, we're in a good place. We're in a great place. Uh, I think that we understand, um, you know, what's at stake and the level that we're trying to get at. Um, you know, I think that we're we're definitely in a good place. So, I'm happy. What you guys learned from last year that maybe is going to help you guys again this year? It's a new experience, man. It's a new journey. So, uh, you know, the thinking about us repeating and actually doing it, uh, the hard part is actually trying to get back. Uh, you know, you understand that this is a new position. Only a few guys on the team, like Ron and Champ, have been through a, a repeat trying to defend. So, you know, you just try to lean on them for advice and try to do everything possible to be ready to play or not. I mean, I guess cherish. Yeah. Thank you. No, no. I, in all, I mean, in all seriousness. Yeah, like no. The larger thing. By the way, I don't want you to think that I was trying to be malicious in terms of you asking the question. Though. I just think that it's hilarious that no, we spend that every we, day together. We, yeah, no, no, that's fine. Well, yeah. oh, you know, some people. The idea that something like are we currently in the state of Louisiana? Like, this has become like up for debate. Yeah. No, I mean, um, I think that there's just so much. I guess, I, I don't know if you can even call it news, there's so many real things going on, active, like things that are going on that's changing, shaping the way of our, of our lives, and I think sometimes it gets skewed because of who we are in the basketball world, and oh man, what does he actually think? Oh no, I, I don't like Harry because he thinks that the world is flat, or he thinks that the world can't be round, or you know, I know the science, I know everything possible, so I mean, not everything possible, but you know, the fact that that can actually be real news, and you know, people are actually asking me that it's a social phenomenon. What do you think about it? You know, are you going to try to protect your image? And what you're, no, I mean, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. The fact that it's a conversation, I'm glad that it, it, it got people talking. Like, does Kyrie actually think the world is right? I'm going to follow that up by asking you about a real issue that I know you've talked about before. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the Dakota Pipeline and the New Order and all of that stuff? Few people can see it, but the rise of the machines happened already. The internet is the new world order. There's the time before the internet and then the time after. Now you have a cell phone in your hand, you don't go anywhere without it. You're the fucking robot and you're the terminator. You're your own worst enemy. You can't see that every compass is pointing to the holy grail and it's a flat earth plane. You see that eye right there? 
It's telling you that the Holy of Holies is at the center of the flat earth plane. It's rubbed in your face on everything. So you're the fucking robot. You're the machine. You get up at a specific time, eat your breakfast at a specific time, take your children off school at a specific time, go to work at a specific time. Everything it has to be it's creature of habit. That's what you are, a creature of habit. And every day is the same thing. And you're gonna get old and die. And I'm telling you that you need to get to the Holy Grail before you're dead. And we're gonna take over this world using this internet connection. Since we're all filthy robots, we might as well use this tool to take over the fucking universe. Simply type into your YouTube search engine, blood over intent, and hit enter. And scroll down, you'll see thousands upon thousands of your brethren, side by side, blood is thick in the water. And all we've done is we've written out on a piece of paper, I intend to bring forth heaven on earth for the benefit of all. Pricked our fingers with a little needle and put a drop of our blood over the paper and then published a short video to YouTube with the title Blood Over Intent, the tag Blood Over Intent, and description Blood Over Intent so that all the videos end up side by side, blood is thicker than water. And I'm telling you, I have the Holy Spear, I see where the Holy Grail is, and I have the Lucius Trust Fund, which is the money to pay to get 144,000 people there. And what I'm telling you is that you need to put your blood beside my own because you can't cross this mythical frost bridge if you're not blood thicker than water because only the devil hides his intent. Everybody knows that. You're the filthy fucking devil robot and uh, you're just like on the fucking Futurama. That's you, the devil fucking robot. And you can't see it. Good thing I'm here. And let me tell you something. The devil and Satan are two different things. The devil is the one that has your soul in the Vatican. That's where they took your birth certificate and they took a copy of your, they took a stamp of your foot and they put your soul on a paper saying they own you. Now you pay for land, you pay for water in a place you were birthed into. So you're lost at sea. Look it up. You're a human. That's legal definition of the Black's Law Dictionary. In all the law dictionaries, it's a filthy monster lost at sea, officially dead. You can't have any land because you're legally dead. You're lost at sea. You're presumed dead in absentia. So you don't have to like it, people. When I put up gallons of blood under Satan himself, the Prince of Darkness, I got all those powers, and I'm taking over this fucking world. Nobody has to like it. I'm bringing forth heaven on earth for the benefit of all, and uh, I'm going to get my eternal life. Bring forth heaven on earth, and I'm getting the fuck out of here.
You are filthy, retarded, and necrophiliac sick. I am eternal essence in the flesh. Now, here comes the source. Now you have to be very observant now. The true name of Satan, the Kabbalists say, is Yahweh. Reversed. For Satan is not a black God, but a negation of God. For initiates, this is not a person, but a force. Do you have heard of movies that say, the force be with you? Okay. Please note. I'll read this again. To the Kabbalists, they say, Yahweh reversed. Okay. So that's their God. They turn everything upside down. To the outside world, they say, Yahweh. To the inner world, it means what? Satan. So they can preach in the name of Jesus Christ the most eloquent, eloquent sermons, and you wouldn't know that they're preaching about Lucifer. You wouldn't know. Now, the name of Yahweh reversed. Now, I was in Israel the other day, and I was on the track of something very important, and I took many photographs, and a man came up to me and he flashed something at me. Very strange. There was another evangelist right next to me. And he flashed something and he says, Look, Allah is your God upside down. And he walked away. And I thought he was nuts. And I read the statement. And I went to a Hebrew scholar. And I said, Will you check this out for me? And he battled and he battled and he battled and he battled. When the mason learns that the key to the worry on the block is the proper application of the dynamic dynamo of living power, he has learned the mastery of his craft. The seething energy of Lucifer are in his hands. Manly palmer hall, high masonic form. The devil is now called darkness by the church, whereas in the Bible he's called the son of God, Lucifer, son of the morning. One quote after the other. And here's the other quote, Blavatsky, secret doctrine. Jehovah, esoterically, is also the serpent or dragon. I'm not saying it. The highest source in occultism is saying it. They're tempted Eve, and the dragon is an old glyph for astral light, which is wisdom in chaos. So, esoterists turn everything upside down. Here she writes in Secret Doctrine, the great serpent of the Garden of Eden and the Lord God are identical they're Luciferians, you see. And so are Jehovah and Cain, one, the Cain who is referred to in theology as the murderer and the liar. So the God of the Bible is the murderer and the liar, and the serpent is exalted. That's secret esoteric teaching, only known to the adepts. Here, yeah, another quote from Secret Doctrine. The appellation Satan in Hebrew, Satan an adversary, to be adverse belongs by right to the first and cruelest adversary of all the other gods, Jehovah. Not to the serpent who spoke only words of sympathy and wisdom. And it is the worst, even in the dogma, the adversary of man. See? So the bad guy is Jesus. The good guy is Satan. Therefore Jehovah was called by the Gnostics the creator of and one with Ophiomorphos, the serpent, Satan. They turn it upside down. 